This is Rich Folley, and I'm sitting here right now with Peter Heller, author of The Painter. Peter, first of all, welcome to PBS at Miami Book Fair. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's great. So this is your second novel. Your first, The Dog Stars, was highly acclaimed, got a lot of buzz, a lot of pressure on the second novel, obviously. Tell me how that second novel came to be. <laughs> uh, the second novel syndrome, didn't want it. Uh, when I finished The Dog Stars, I had this feeling like when you hit a pool ball and before the before the cue ball even hits your ball, you know it's going in the pocket. I felt that way with the Dog Stars. I loved the book. I thought maybe it would you know, make it a little bit of a clamor, and uh, I didn't want the pressure. So as soon as I finished the Dog Stars, I dove right into the painter. Um, I started, you know, I wrote four nonfiction books. I've written a, you know, a bunch uh, of uh, adventure books. Um, I always knew what was going to happen next, and I knew the ending because it happened. And when I wrote fiction, I didn't want to know. I wanted to be surprised. Um, I was a kayaker for many years. That's what I wrote about for magazines. And on a river, you know, when you come around a tight bend, if, if it hasn't been described or you don't know it, very, you never know what's going to be there. It could be a waterfall or a cougar drinking. Or I wanted that feeling uh, when I was writing again, and to be surprised and shocked and afraid. Um, so. I started right in with the first line on the painter, um, had no idea really who was talking. Uh, a few days into it, I thought, hmm, this sounds a little bit like, actually a lot like my friend Jim Wagner, who's a very uh, well-known expressionist painter in Taos. And he's a big, brawling, uh, kind of a fighter who uh, loves to fly fish, and a lot like the character Jim Stegner in the painter. And then I decided it can't be him because he's still alive and the liability issues would be, you know, too dicey. <laughs> so I thought, no, nah, it can't be Jim Does Wagner. Does he know it's him? Well, wait, so I kept <laughs> writing. Three weeks into the book, I'm like, hmm, this is a lot like Jim. I got to call him. Yeah. <laughs> I called him up in Taos. I said, hey, Jim, I'm writing this novel, second novel. And, uh, you know, the character, he's, a, he's, a ta he's an expressionist from Taos, just like you. And he was kind of like, oh, great, you know. And uh, he shot a guy in a bar for making a comment about his kid, just like you did. Kind of a silence. And he spent a year in Santa Fe State, just like you. Silence. And actually, he kind of looks like you. Oh, you know, no. he's like broad shoulders, got a <laughs> Still salt and pepper beard. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a cap tilted on his head, you know, paint spatter with some fishing flies stuck in it, just like you. And down at the river, they call him Hemingway, you know, just like you. And actually, the paintings he paintings are a lot like yours. I mean, actually the same palette. And in fact, um, one of the books, the paintings I just put in there is a painting that you painted. That one with the fish, you know, swallowing all the houses. Mm -hmm. and there's kind of a silence. And then I hear, oh, that sounds great. Oh. I was like, yeah. You're in the clear. Like, yeah, just let me know, you yeah. know, how it goes. And um, I'm excited. So when I finished it, uh, and it was so much my buddy Jim Wagner, it was so much his essence. I sent him the first um, copy that I got. And I get this phone call, and he's like, oh man, I love the book. I'm walking around the house wondering if I killed a guy. <laughs> so then That's you know, funny. you know, it, it was all right, yeah. So the, the idea, uh, I'm glad that he approved, because otherwise that sophomore slump might have kicked in there. Right. But um, the, the idea, you write about the outdoors, and you're, you're, you mentioned you're an adventure writer. And I would love to know how that's impacted your fiction. Obviously, you love to tell stories of all types. Um, but that idea of adventure, that quest for something new, that quest for excitement, how has it influenced your fiction? Yeah. You know, I, I, I've wanted to write fiction since I was a little guy, like six or something. And I did everything you're supposed to do when you want to be like a great writer and you're a little kid. And I read that Jack London would put um, words on the wall on cue cards that you know he didn't know, and um, he would try to use them. And I, so I did that, and I copied out poems of my favorite poets, and I read the dictionary, like actually read it, you know, like things a 12-year-old kid probably shouldn't do. <laughs> and uh, and then I became an English major in college and everything. And I got out of college. And nobody at the English department said, you can't make a living being a poet and a short story writer, you know, which was you know, kind of mean, I thought. And I got out, and it was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? i got to make a living. Um, so I did every job uh, you could think of. You know, I did, I did construction. I was a logger. I was offshore lobster fisherman. Um, I was a killer pizza deliverer. 
did a lot of that, dishwasher. And, but I also, you know, um, love to kayak and I love to fish. And so sort of having to do all that stuff. And then a friend said, well, you know, why don't you combine your passions? Look, you need to make a living. You love to kayak. Why don't you write for Outside Magazine? And you know, when you're young and dumb, you know, you don't know what you can't do, right? So I went down, I picked up a copy of Outside, I found an editor whose name sounded nice, Laura Honhold, and I got the information number for the magazine. I called him up, I said, I'd like to speak to Laura, please. She picked up, and I started talking really fast. I said, hey, you know, I'm a really good writer, and you know, I, I published a little short story in Harper's. Yeah, I kayak class five. <laughs> I think you should send me to China on this expedition, which I heard about. And she did. No, you're kidding. Well, I realized later that I was expendable. I mean, they didn't have a writer who could kayak <laughs> class five. They didn't want to kill anybody, right? Their favorite stable of writers. Score. So, that, let that be a lesson oh to, God. to many others. A, the trip, you know, a guy died on the first day on the training run. And um, I was one of three kayakers. And uh, we were like the safety guys. And uh, he washed into a log jam with another guy. We pulled one guy off. and. The second guy was stuck, and um, the river was rising. And we, you know, we tried to hold his head out, um, hold him up so he could breathe, and the river rose right over his head. And uh, it was traumatic. You know, that was my first assignment. And I got back from that trip, and you know, I was like, I can't write this. And the editor said, What happened? And I told her, and she said, You go write it. And I, you know, and that was how I. That's how I began in journalism. I mean. It was a weird way to start, but um, I knew that I better, you know, if I was gonna if I was gonna ever kayak again, I had to get right back on the saddle, get right back in the river, and um, so I took another assignment right away, and uh, it was a fr it was a Kiwi Russian expedition in the High Pamirs, this crazy river, and the Russians are so different than the Kiwis, you know, they're like Russians get to a crazy rap and they're grim, they chain smoke and everything, and the Kiwis are hopping around like, oh, she'll be right, you know, no problem. It was a really fun trip, perfect antidote, and that sort of launched his career of you know adventure journalism. And I think you know I think all of that stuff I learned about um, telling a story because a magazine story you have to grab the reader right away, you know, because it's, it could be in a doctor's office or you know they're just picking it up. You have to grab them right away. You have to have your characters jump to life right away, and you have to keep them turning the pages. And I I think it taught me a lot about pacing, about setting place, and all things that. Um, you know, really helped me when I turned to doing actually what I'd wanted to do when I was since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. So when it came to writing fiction, when I you know three years ago when I I had like nine months out free, I thought okay I can do you know I think I don't think I have to take a magazine piece for like nine months. I sat down and it was just like coming home and all those experiences outdoors um, and you know all around the world doing this crazy stuff. Uh, it gave me that you know the sense data and the the. The ability to describe a sense, of, you give a reader a sense of place, I think, was hugely helpful. Well, it's been fantastic to continue the ride with you after the dog stars into the painter. It's a great follow-up. I think your readers are going to love it if they haven't found it already. And uh, I hope you have an incredible rest of the Miami Book Fair. And it's great to have you here. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It's a great fair, by the yeah, way. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Couldn't agree more. Glad <laughs> to be here. Thank you.